will be better that student starts focusing on ethics, essay and optional and for which our topper sheets will come handy. For example, since less than 40 days, it is very difficult to master philosophical essays. So there should be a balance between writing answers as well as revising. So what I can suggest student is, some students uh, who are not used to writing answers till date, for example, they are writing their first mains, probably they should at least take two questions or two case studies every day. So many a time student thinks that when I study it is sufficient, but that is not the case. So it is not about reading and reading. It is also about writing within the stipulated time period. And that comes through practice. So probably he should go and practice it in the real life or he should go or he should take our Abhyas tests regularly. One in our main 365, there is a data sheet. So you can use this data for writing answers. Or when you are looking into the topper sheet, I'll observe two things. One, the way the topper has presented, that is the flow charts. It's very important why? Because the topper is in the list because of certain reasons. Hello dear aspirants, welcome to this conversational video regarding the strategy for mains examination 2024. As there are less than 40 days remaining for the mains examination, there are a lot of doubts and queries from your side. So to discuss all these kinds of issues and to get solution regarding this, I am joined by Ram Sudhir sir who is the faculty of Vision IAS. Welcome sir. Thank you Vishal. So sir, uh, as I have said that less than 40 days are remaining for the examination. So what should be the major focus areas from now onwards for the aspirants? Yes, Vishal, uh, so which we don't study in prelims primarily. Okay, so it will be better that student starts focusing on ethics, essay and optional. And for which our topper sheets will come handy. For example, since less than 40 days, it is very difficult to master philosophical essays. So probably the student can take the topper sheets and get the quotations or the approach. He can use it, he can put all, them at, all of them at one place and start revising. The same applies with ethics also, where he can collect real life examples or he can make some real life examples based on the model of the topper's answer sheets. So I can put everything at one place and with, within a very short span of time. So that benefit is definitely there when I use the topper sheet. So what I recommend students is use the topper sheets, especially for ethics and essays and that will be really helpful. Right. So what you are suggesting is like pre-prepared certain kind of aspects yes. that can be very handy yes. for the last minute last preparation. Last minute preparation. That would be a solution because philosophical essay, it's really difficult to master at this point of time. Right. Yes. So I think what you are suggesting here is also mastering the writing practice also. And which brings me to the next question that answer writing, which is a very crucial aspect at this particular juncture and along with the same revision also because less than 40 days, a lot of aspects are there to revise also. Yes. So how a student can make sure that there should be a balance between both of them? So there should be a balance between writing answers as well as revising. So what I can suggest student is, some students uh, who are not used to writing answers till date, for example, they are writing their first mains, probably they should at least take two questions or two case studies every day and write it regularly. And they should also take up some full length tests. Uh, for example, our Vision IAS comes up with this beautiful program that is Abhyas. So you can go and check yourself in the real life conditions. So many a time student thinks that when I study it is sufficient, but that is not the case. So it is not about reading and reading. It is also about writing within the stipulated time period and that comes through practice. So probably he should go and practice it in the real life or he should go or he should take our Abhyas tests regularly. So but the question here is how do I balance both? So here there are two categories of students. One who have already written mains twice or thrice, probably they will take up mostly the full length tests only. But somebody who is only writing his first mains and he can take few Abhyas tests and he can do a daily writing practice of taking up some case studies from the previous year questions or from our Abhyas test series and he keeps on practicing. So that there's a two types of approach which you can follow with respect to uh, right. writing practice. So also students should be like uh, first able to assess themselves that where they are lagging right now yes, yes. and based upon that they should yes, be working yes. upon the areas where they might be having certain kind of struggles. Yes. Right. yes. So sir, uh, now as we have analyzed topper's copy, so we came to know certain kind of aspects that they are using certain dynamic content also, maybe certain kind of examples, case studies yes. and in this particular manner I think current affairs aids a lot. Yes. So how a student make, can make sure that the current affairs will be incorporated in the answer writing along with the other aspects like presentation, content, etc. Yes. 
So here again it differs from subject to subject, Vishal. So for example, if I talk about economy as such, right. so in Indian economy basically all the questions are only from seven, eight areas. So if I have to really bifurcate the Indian economy, so one you have questions from economic growth, we have questions from inclusiveness, we have questions on agriculture, PDS, food processing, cropping pattern, okay, so or developmental issues like jobless growth, unemployment and poverty. So clearly a student can identify that these are the specific six to seven areas where the question is going to come. So based on which when he sees the topper sheet, he will be collecting the data related to the these topics. Right. So I will not collect all the data. So you can use two things. One in our mains 365, there is a data sheet. So you can use this data for writing answers or when you are looking into the topper sheet, I will observe two things. One, the way the topper has presented. That is the flow charts. It's very important. Why? Because the topper is in the list because of certain reasons. And one important reason is the way he has presented. Because after studying for three years, everybody will have knowledge. It is all about how do you present, how do you convince the examiner to give you that one additional mark. So this is what you will observe from the topper sheet. For economics, it is seven areas, flow charts and data. Exactly. It is very clear. So when you know these three, I think revising economics becomes very simple. When it comes to ethics, it is examples, real life examples and case studies. So this is and there is a mechanism where for every word probably you can pull out a example. So this you can pick up from the topper sheet and you can come up with your own flavor to it. So this is another uh, thing which the student can do. So I think it is all about how do you use the topper sheet efficiently. And uh, that is how uh, the student can progress. Right. And I think the idea that student can derive from the topper's copies are like these kind of hacks that you have yes, already yes. suggested. See, because uh, there are few things which are there in the topper which has pushed him into the list. Exactly. And that gives him that additional one mark, etc. So that style has to be mastered or at least understood to some extent so that you can get better marks in the mains. You can maximize your score. Exactly. And I think this brings me to the next question also which is time management. Because before examination time management as there are roughly 35 days from yes, now onwards yes, yes. that are remaining. And also during the time of examination also because 3 hours will be there and you have to manage each and every questions adequately so that you will be able to answer all yes. the questions. So in this particular manner, I think presentation that you are suggesting is going to help a lot. So can uh, any kind of like other advice that you want to provide? See, to the generally students? students have this problem thinking that I will attempt all the 20 questions and whatever I write, maybe it is all about quantity. Right. So what I believe is it's a game of averages. UPSC is a game of averages where I perform above average with respect to all the GS papers. And I pull my optional score to at least 270, 280, then I'm in the race. This is one way of looking at it. Second important observation is, it is all about combination of quality plus quantity. So some quantity, of course 18 questions, 17 questions I have to attempt. But at the same time I have to write in line with the question. So this has to be very carefully observed by the student. It is not just about scribbling all the 20 questions, rather it would be a combination of quality plus quantity. Next is we have to make the life of the examiner as simple as possible. So how do you do that? Maybe you are writing it in point format, example or the data point is clearly visible for the examiner. He will not stress himself in terms of searching for points. So how do you make the points very clear to the examiner so that he will be able to give you that additional mark? So I think that that is, uh, so time management, so all this cannot be tested directly in the exam. So you have to test it when you are writing your mock test. So take some tests, Abhyas tests and practice it solve the previous questions also and then you will get a feel of yes, you are able to do it. So that feel is also required before entering the exam hall with confidence. Otherwise there is always this self-doubt whether I can complete the paper and you cannot maximize the time. So this is a very important area. If suppose students have shortage of time, I do suggest like at least papers like ethics, they have to go and write. Because completing ethics becomes difficult, it's a real challenge because that managing that case study and everything becomes a challenge. If the student leaves one or two case studies also, then uh, he's out of the race. It is better that you go and practice. It is better if you practice all the papers. But at least if you're not able to practice all, then select few like the ethics or maybe few areas where time is very important and go and practice in the real life conditions. 
that's very important all right so sir i think there is a question from my curiosity that i want to ask you that you talked about the confidence related things right and when a uh, suppose kar if i am a candidate if i might not be get, able to get that good score in that particular examination there might be the counterproductive aspect also that i might lose upon the confidence also so in this particular case how an aspirant should be taking the result of that particular mock test see mock test is not for Uh, evaluating or why can say mock test is not for uh, you know uh, your scores what i always suggest is there is always a learning that happens from the mock test don't take the scores of mock test as standard or don't take it to your heart in simple words you may respect it but you need not take it to the heart there are many toppers who have failed in the mock test and there are many who would have topped mock test but still they would, would they are not there in the final list right so but i will use mock test as something like to do additional practice whether i am able to complete the paper in time or whether i am able to write at least 17 or 18 questions okay so this is how the student should use the mock test so at this point of time though you are writing the mock test remember the score of mock test is not going to decide your life okay so don't take it to your heart and get depressed like your mock test scores are going down and things like that that's a very important factor at the same time you should go and write that fear should not stop you from writing the mock test so there are two things i will write it i will also see the scores i will not feel bad but i will learn what i can so that should be the approach in the last minute most of the students know this they have to not take it to the heart and just go and give their best right right yes yes sir so my last question to you sir is like we have already i think discussed at length regarding the stress management also but can you provide certain kind of other aspects that student might be facing right now in terms of stress management related issues and any last piece of advice for yeah us? see stress in the last 30 days is common first understand that it is common and it is there for everybody now another important aspect is those who are able to handle this anxiety and stress will get that 20 additional marks or 5 additional marks in each paper which will push you in so remember the more cool and composed you are the more is the opportunity for you to do better than others this is a fact now the, the comes the point like everybody says yes you should not be stressed but the stress keeps coming now this is a problem this is a basic problem but what we should understand is at the end of the day upsc result we can't sit and predict and another important aspect is there are certain factors which i can't control so what i can control is give my best follow my routine revise multiple number of times my concentration is only on my day target right day to day targets i will not think about what will happen if i fail what will happen if i don't clear so that's not in my control so probably students should be able to bifurcate this it's a difficult thing but they have to do this okay unless and until we do this the stress keeps on coming up again and again and if you have problem vision ias has come up with a wonderful cell wellness center and wellness cell where you can come up with your problem if at all you have some specific problem where there is a continuous thought that is coming up and it is pushing you down so you can come and discuss with the experts and resolve it but what i suggest is so get so engrossed in the preparation that you forget about the result of the preparation so you have to be with the preparation right now be in the present moment and just focus on the preparation whether you are achieving your daily targets what will happen we will see so if we make it fantastic don't make it we'll look into it later so just we have to give our best that is what the student should be thinking right now right so what you are suggesting is control the controllables and then there then are certain yeah. variables which might not be in our control yes. so leave yes. them right so sir thank you very much sir for joining us today for this particular session and i think the students might have got a lot insights from your side regarding the preparation in this last 30 35 days of the exam thank you sir thank you sir yeah. so with this we came to an end to this particular conversational session for more such sessions stay tuned with vision is thank you